This is the second part of this tutorial and we're going to investigate the Len Linux image. Okay, so over here we have our host and over here we have our Linux image. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the IP address of our server of our VM image and we can find out our IP addresses here and I th think it's on the 75 subnet so on the host it's 192.168.75.1 we'll just check and what we'll do is we'll bring up the a terminal with inside Linux just takes a little minute to start up so we use ifconfig to find out the address of our interface and we can see it's 192.168.75.35 Okay, so we can fill this in here. 75.135 and the host address is 192.168.75.1. So what we'll do now is we'll just ping from our host into our VM image. .135 and we can see that works fine and we'll do the same again over here 192.168.75.1 and that is successful we've got to stop the Linux image with uh, control C okay so the next part of this is we're going to have a look at the the web service so if we go into the var folder and then we go into www so in here we have one file index.html this just happens to be the default file for web access okay so we'll run netstat we can run netstat minus a but we might get quite a few connections so we'll just have a look at the listening ports with minus l so we can see here that we have an FTP service telnet web put PC and MDNS So the first thing we'll do is from our host we'll contact our VM image just to see if we can contact the web service. It takes a little minute to start up should get our web browser to run. This takes a little minute. And what we should see is the default web file. Oops, I'll just try again just to see if we've got the right address. I think it's actually 135. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we've contacted the web server from our host into the VM image. Now, what we'll do is we'll do the same again, but this time we'll use Telnet. 
Telnet 192.168.75.135 and I'm going to do on port 80 and then we can see get slash index.html and we can see here this is the file that, that we get back Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll actually create a file over here. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to check the attributes on the, the web folder. Okay, so we can see here that we have read write for all users. Uh, change mod 666 and index.html will change it as we want. If we need to go into the super user, we can just type in su. And we can do the change mod from here if required. So what we'll do is that we'll bring up the XML editor. And then we'll open up our index.html. So we'll just modify this one here, sample page. here and we'll save that let's check that it's been saved okay so it's now called sample page that's so what we'll do is over here we'll just check that that page has been saved 192.168.75. Dot. We'll just check our IP address again. 75.135. And what should see is the new page in our web browser when a web browser appears okay so we can see it's now changed to sample page this is a sample page so the next thing we do is we go on to the, the log folder we just check here into log and with inside log we have many of our logs so we have an Apache 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 log and you can see these have been updated fairly recently so we can have a look to see what accesses that we've had. So you can see here this was a recent access from Firefox and it, uh, it's just been updated and then we can look at uh, previous accesses from here. So you can see there that the the get command is actually shown. So from this we can actually check what files have been accessed. So now what we'll do is we'll, we'll run the Telnet service. We'll run the Telnet client to connect into the VM server. 175.153.1.1 Let's check again. <coughs> 
135. Okay. So we just log in again. And we can see the home folder is home Napier. So we can uh, create a file, say. So we can see here we have a, a list file, and if we go back to our folder here, we can see there, there's the file that we've actually created, the file called list. So our telnet access works. So we'll just exit from there. Now what we'll do is we'll check the FTP access. So we can check it from a web browser first, if we want, just to see if it's working. So now we change that to FTP protocol. And we should get a service, so there you go. So that's the... FTP access working. So we'll try again and this time we'll do it from Telnet. So we can say user APR password APR123 and and so on, just as we've done with the Windows tutorial. Okay, so the next thing we do is the remote desktop. So we have the remote desktop service running with inside the VM image. So right, here we are. So what we'll do is we'll remotely access it. So it's one three five using our VNC viewer and we need to make sure that it's been enabled ok so we allow here and here and now our service should be running To, to connect in. So we should find that the our Linux image actually shows a message. In this case we'll allow the desktop to be viewed and it shows that we can now do the same on here and we can actually even control the desktop remotely. 